everybody, welcome back to another Vetwitz Power Up video and today we're going to be taking a look at line styles and it's a tool that you may have used many times before but I bet there's a lot that I can teach you about how to use lines in a new way and speed up your workflow dramatically. So let's get started with this video on everything you've ever wanted to know about lines and line styles in your favourite CAD software, Vectorworks. Okay, so the very first thing to note with Vectorworks is it actually has a very sophisticated uh, line type style command that you can use to create lots of different types of line styles from dot dash through to things like water and fill lines as well. Now I've made up a little page um, and I'm happy to share with this with some of you if you're interested, so drop me a drop me a contact. Basically, these are actually line styles. So if I kind of zoom into some of these on the drawing, you'll notice that this is a break line. Um, it just looks like a regular line, which it is. So basically draw it as a regular line. I can always change the thickness of that line as well. And if I turn on the line weights, you'll begin to see that a little bit more with this button here. Basically, what happens is the line style takes care of the actual kind of style of the line itself. So there's quite a wide variety of these, which so just sort of pan around. Um, you can see a really nice one there for a sort of cold water line. There's like a double line, uh, fence lines with circles, square fence, all sorts of here. I've also created a few blank spaces so that you can add your own into this particular file as well. Now, obviously the most common type of line that architects need to use to represent things that are dotted above or below you would be things like the dotted lines. And Vectorworks has a really good range of the ISO uh, British Standard sort of dotted line styles built in as well. And again, all of these available if you do want to change those pen sort of thicknesses as well, that's fine. So if you haven't seen these line types before, what you're going to want to do is uh, go to Command R and basically find the file that they're located in. Now I'll just show you where these are in the standard file. So basically go into your Vectorworks libraries. Let's just hide down those open files and favorites for a second. So I'm going to go to the Vectorworks libraries to attributes and there's a file here called line types. So if you open up this file, you're in the resource manager, you will see all the line types on the screen. Okay, and you do get a bit of a preview that you can kind of look at in this dialogue here. However, there is a bit of a limit to the size the preview will go. Okay, so what I quite like to do is actually make a sort of visual library file, which is what I've done here. And basically just so it means that I can actually experiment with all these different line types live on screen. Now another really nice uh, element to this, if I want to, I can actually copy and paste these into my drawing and start using them. Okay, so how do we actually apply these line styles in real life? So let me go onto my demo file here. And I think for this, I'll pop into a normal light mode rather than dark mode. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw some lines. So click number two, which is the keyboard shortcut for the line tool. And one really super duper tip is if I want to draw a line five meters long, basically I can type in five M to draw my line and then return. So that's quite a bit quicker than typing in 5,000. Let's beef up the line weight on that line just so you can see it a little bit more clearly. Okay, now this time I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm actually going to type in uh, using American feet and inches, which I do quite a bit, 10, the sign for feet, and then 6. And watch what happens when I click return. That will immediately convert to millimetres for me. So again, there's no need to do the conversion on a calculator. So basically, the really nice little tip here that you can use is basically to apply in any unit. So if I type 450 cm, you've guessed it, that'll be 450 centimetres. And the final one, just to show you, let's do 1 uh, km, okay? And you can see I've got a line that's literally a kilometre long. So pretty amazing that you can type in the different units. Okay, so how do we apply the line styles? So what we can do is just pop open our resource manager with the shortcut, Command R. Um, and if you do have the line types available, you can basically just drag and drop to apply them. So let's just drag and drop a few of those line styles on here and see how they work. So you can see you just drag and drop onto the line. Now, of course, what you could also do is set this up by class. Okay, so if I wanted to create a break line class, a really nice little tip in Vectorworks is to right click and actually just go um, create class using object attributes. Let's go ahead and we'll just call this line hyphen break. Okay, and basically what that means is 
you can edit the properties of this class, it will automatically give you uh, the line weight and the weight and the different line type that I've chosen here. When I click OK, basically the next line I draw, if I do want to, I can go to my classes and basically I can actually right click and assign to selection. This is one of my favorite ways to assign a class to an object. Now what's kind of cool here is, let's say I decide to um, change the color or the line weight. Let's go and make it a slightly thinner line. Okay, if I put the line weights on, you'll begin to see that a bit more clearly. What's really cool though is if I basically right click, I can now update my class definition using that line style. And you'll notice that both of those break lines are now the same line weight because I updated the class. So it's a very neat way to create classes and basically update them as you go as well. Okay, so how about we tunnel a little bit deeper and understand how these lines were actually made in the first place. So in order to do that, the best thing to do is right click on your line type and actually find it. So down at the bottom, you're gonna see a locate command. So what that will do is locate that particular line type. So in here, I've got lots of choices. If I do want to, I could, for example, duplicate. Okay, so we'll just make another alternative. Let's click OK. And let's go ahead and right click and edit this line type. So this kind of line is what they call a complex line. Okay, and you can either edit the settings of the line, okay, or you can edit the geometry. So if we go ahead and edit the uh, geometry this time, let's click OK. Just trying to look for the dialogue. Okay, so yeah, just sorry, just behind the resource manager was my dialogue. So here is actually the line style. Now the way this works in Vectorworks is really quite neat. Basically, it repeats. This element will repeat, and what you can do is actually drag different spacings, and you can see I've got a gap, let's say I want a five mil gap, okay? Um, so let me add something else into this line type. Let's just get a little square here. I don't know what I'm creating or why I'm creating it like this, but I just really want to show you how you can understand how to create these different line types. Okay, so I've done some uh, little changes here. Let's just right click and add surface into there. Okay, so when I exit, you'll notice if I now apply my new line style, dragging and dropping from the resource manager, now that is the particular line style that I have. So let me just right click and edit that one more time, edit the geometry there. Um, let me just sort of take this shape here and use my clip tool. So I'm gonna get my rubber, let's just rub those bits out again. And basically I'll just leave that one this time. What I'll also do though is basically change the angle. Okay, so if I want to, I could maybe bring this up to zigzag and let's use the mirror tool, let's mirror down and I'll change the spacing back across. Now I'm not really sure what this kind of particular line type is doing for me, but it's really just to show you, you can create any line types you want and you still have the different sort of line weight within that as well. Okay, fantastic. So if you would like to create a line uh, completely from scratch, a brand new line type, the best thing to do is double click. Basically, you can see that I can create a brand new line type. So when we click create, we actually get two different options. So the very first option is gonna be the basic line. Okay, a simple line type. Um, the next one will be the complex one. So this is where you can create your sort of dots and dashes. And you can see in here, you can basically move all of these different spacings around. Um, over here, you've got the kind of repeating sort of length as well. So let's go with this one. Okay, we'll call this line type one. And let's just drag and drop line type one or new line type onto maybe this line here. So you can see I've been able to create a nice sort of dot dash line as required using the simple line types. Okay, so that's pretty cool, the simple line types. But as I say, you will find lots of different sort of dot dash and standard line types in there. So I've rarely needed to do that. Okay, so let's go ahead now and make a complex line type. So I'm going to do Command R and bring up my resource manager. I'm going to right click or double click rather and go to create a new line type. So this time, rather than the uh, simple sort of line type here we created before, um, I'm going to go to complex and I'm going to create it as a world-based one. Now, the good thing about world-based is they take into account the scale. So let's click OK. OK, and basically all we need to do is draw something. So if I draw, say, uh, let's say I draw a timber stud. OK, so I'm going to make this 50 by 100. Let's just place that down into the center there. 
And you can begin to sort of see this working already. And basically what Vectorworks is doing, let's hide resources, is enabling me to basically change the gap here. So let's say I want a 600 um, stud gap. Okay, you can see that that little stud will repeat every 600 mil. Now, if I add a bit more detail, let's draw the traditional kind of stud lines in there. If I really want to, I'll maybe give that a little bit of uh, timber color. Uh, to do that, I'm just going to go onto my row colors and choose a nice sort of brownie color here. Let's use something a little bit sort of subtle. And basically, let's exit the line type. So now I'll pop open resources, and here's my new line type. So basically, I can just drag and drop that on. And you can see I've got timber studs. Okay, well, let's turn off the line weights because it's a bit heavy. So the great thing is whenever I sort of duplicate or stretch the line, um, really I'm just going to get studs repeating at 600 spacings. So what I could do, I could go down and call this uh, stud line type. Let's call this stud line type and let's call this 600. Okay, great. If I wanted uh, 400 studs for whatever reason, I could simply duplicate. Okay, let's call this uh, 400. Okay, and then I could right click, edit, edit the geometry, command R. And basically all I need to do is move that one in, let's say to four. So now when I come back out, you'll see there's my 600 stud. If I go here, I can double click and attach the 400 stud, so more regular. So this is actually quite a nice way to work. So if I did want to, um, this would be one potential way that I could actually use my wall tool. And basically, let me just select a different wall type and we'll go for something, of course, from the JRA walls pack. And let's just say um, I've got this sort of timber stud here. We'll drag it across. OK, I will just need to edit this wall style very slightly because I just want to make for this particular example, the stud a different dimension. Let's make that 100 mil just so you can see where I'm going with this. Yep, okay, and then all I need to do is basically drag in my line type, snap that into the center of that particular component, bring it to the front, and I've got a really kind of nice sort of bit of detail of some timber studs um, in the wall there. Now, of course, they won't show in 3D. Um, if the wall was three-dimensional, just giving it height, you'd see that, you know, you won't see those, but it's still quite nice to see them in 2D and top plan. Okay, great. So I really hope you've enjoyed this uh, short video on different types of line styles. And as I say, a really sort of good thing to understand how to kind of create different line weights, but also different line styles within Vectorworks. So thanks for watching everybody. And if you are new around here, make sure you like and subscribe. I'll be doing lots more videos for you soon. And I really hope to see you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.